So welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers of the old way, but accept some of the new. We love to cook and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. Well, hi guys. Welcome back to Whippoorwill Holler Homestead. A place where you can come to from the outside world and all the chaos and just sit around and talk to us about anything. Pray with us, share a recipe, share gardening, or just anything that has to do with life skills or just life in general. A place where you can come and just sit down and just talk and uh, come away maybe feeling just a little bit better, hopefully. But I want y'all to know Miss Lori's doing a lot better. I have been pretty sick. Um, I had several people ask me if it was COVID. Um, I've been around a lot of COVID. We've had a lot of sickness in the school, and I'm with these children every day. Um, no, I took several tests, and they both come back negative. But I have been pretty sick, so we just have to take it at that. But uh, ever since COVID first started, I have been in the middle of COVID in the middle of the depths of it every day. We all know that Mr. Brown got it really bad. <clears throat> Several of my family members, and then being out in the public and within the, the school system, I was just in it constantly. But I never ever tested positive for COVID, even when I'd come down sick or just felt bad. And when I went and got my antibodies checked, it showed that I've never had COVID. So I, I can't explain that. Don't know. Um, I know that I've been sick several times, but my tests are always negative. But to go on from that, you know, back in before YouTube was even, even existed, I always um, took my vitamins and elderberry and, and herbals, you know, just anything like that. We've been doing all of our life. So I just, if you're going to get sick, you're going to get sick. Now, every summer I do get a summer cold and it's usually pretty rough on me, but I am doing better. I may not sound real good, but I am doing better, but I'm so glad y'all are here with us. And I appreciate all the prayers, all the prayers from everybody. Um, I've gotten some gifts lately in the mail and letters, and I want to thank y'all very much. We appreciate every one of them. What I want to talk about today is the fact that um, Danny and I grew up in a place here in Arkansas where you can be without electricity for a month or over. It just depends on the circumstances. It can do be due to weather mainly a lot of times, and... Um, it's not fun. We all know that. But we also know that times could get to where we just, we either won't be able to afford electricity or we just won't have it. So this is what I want to share with y'all today, how I can go on with my homestead and my daily life and not worry that I can continue because I have what I need to be self-sufficient and take care of my family and take care of me and Mr. Brown. Um, Living without electricity is not hard unless, you know, you could be a sick person that has to have that electricity for, for different reasons, and I understand that. But for most people that aren't sick and, and need the electricity, it's not hard to live without electricity. It's just inconvenient. Um, like I said, living where we live, you can be without electricity any time. There's been times when Mr. Brown would be off trucking and be gone for a week or two, and we'd have a, an ice storm or just anything like that, and electricity would be off for one or two weeks, 
and uh, me and the kids would be on a farm. And like I said, this was before YouTube ever existed. And, uh, you know, we just done what we had to do to make it through everyday life. So we've always been able to do that. We know what it takes to have to live without electricity. We don't choose to do that. We don't choose to be off grid because we don't have no reason to. Um, our electricity here where we're at in this cabin is not bad at all, so we can afford it at that point, but it could get to the point that we can't. So we should always be ready for that. But what I want to show y'all today is some of the things that we have, even here in my kitchen. I mean, if electricity was to go out right now, I could still go ahead and go on with my, my daily chores and routines and be just fine. Now, would some of the things be a little inconvenient? Yes, it would, but that's okay. I'm going to bring y'all down here where you can see what I got here. And this is just little things, little things that maybe you may not think of that you would just need just to get through the day maybe and um, for cooking or just anything like that. And uh, it's just little things to make sure that you have in your home uh, in case it does happen. And we'll even move on outside so I can show you a few things out there that will, you know, that are a necessity to us. And then a few bigger things that is a big, a big help when you don't have electricity. Okay, let's talk about some of the things that I might need here in the kitchen that I'll be using with no electricity. And this right here is something that I, I've had for years. And um, it's called a, a gourmet. And uh, I'm sure there's different brands that you can buy. But it's just a hand crank uh, blender uh, chopper. It's, it's like a miniature um, processor, food processor, that you can use without electricity. So... It's to, for me, and I like I said, I've had this for a long time. It's a necessity, and it's really easy to use. You just crank it just like this, and it chops up and uh, does a good job on on just about anything. Like I said, I've had it for a long time, and uh, I probably need to get me a new one. I will, and maybe if they have a little bigger one, I may end up doing that. But this is just a necessity for me if you have to be without electricity. Now, as far as the chopper, this is an, an old, old one we got at a, a flea market, antique store. And this is what they used to use to chop with. So you can chop meat, you can chop veggies, you can chop nuts, anything with this thing right here. So, you know, it, it may not be as convenient as using a food processor, but you may not have that choice either. And I always have one of these, and it's really getting hard for me to use one anymore. But this is, requires no batteries, just your hand to open up a can. You really need one of these because, you know, that could make the difference of you eating or not eating if you have a lot of canned goods in your home. So I always have one of these. And uh, I need to get a new one. Uh, this one's pretty wore out. They do have the ones that have batteries that you just kind of put on top of the can. It goes around around to open it. But, you know, I, for me, to feel safe, I'd want one of these just in case. Of course, we got the old-fashioned coffee grinder for coffee beans, and I do have a lot of coffee beans put back because coffee beans last longer than ground coffee. So, Mr. Brown would always have his coffee for sure. And that being talking about, um, we don't use Keurigs here. <laughs> Not that I have anything against them. Or um, electric coffee pot. This is Mr. Brown's coffee pot, so uh, he can make him some coffee. So you need one of those if you're a coffee drinker. Make sure you got your coffee pot that you can use on top of your, your stove or outside on campfire or whatever. Always have plenty of candles. Uh, this is not all the candles I have. This is just one the, that I had convenient just to get. I have all kinds of candles. I have candles that are, uh, I think they're 24-hour candles that I've got put back under the bed in a box. I think... I got them off of Amazon that will burn for hours and hours and hours. Always make sure that you have matches. And I keep my matches and a bunch of them 
in a glass. Keep them in something like a big glass jar or jug. Don't just throw them in your uh, your drawer or something because we had an incident one time when we think I'm, I'm, even a mouse struck a match in a pantry and lit it. So always make sure you got it in a glass with a, a lid on it. But matches are very necessary. Mr. Brown, if you come in here and explain this, because I really don't know much about this, but this is something that I purchased off uh, Amazon in case that, <clears throat> for me, it was something that we would always have if something would happen to the matches, if the matches uh, got too, too much humidity and just wouldn't light or something. But uh, it... This is actually just, it's just a match. We may have to get up there closer where they can see it. But there's five in this bag. But this is something you carry with you. I mean, I carry it in my pocket. You can carry it on a keychain if you needed to. Put it up here where they can see it. It comes out. This this here comes out the top. What you do is you put you a little bit of lighter fluid, just like the old uh, Zippo lighters. That type of lighter fluid. You put you a few drops down in there, just enough to wet that little end there. It's got some little fuzz on it. And it's got a striker on the side. It's got a striker on the side. You see that's plain. Yeah, and it don't even have. No, I don't have no fluid in. There's it. no fluid in, y'all. We we haven't bought fluid yet, so make sure you got. But you can see. Yeah, that. I can see the spark on it. So. But if you had fluid on there, when you spark it down, it'd be like a match. You yeah. can hold it just like that. So five of those come in this bag, and I'm gonna look and see and put it in my description box down and below. It has that bag has more of where you can put this, you know, more thread in it. Yeah, the little thread. For the match. So. But that's real handy. It is a good thing to have, especially if you're out. Out and about. And out and about. But when you put that on there, when you put it back on there and screw that on there, then it's sealed. It's sealed, good. Like I say, it'll fit on a keychain. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Well, I'm glad I bought them. So I will try to find these again, put them in my Amazon store. A lot of y'all having uh, trouble finding my Amazon store, and it's it's always in the information box below the videos. And it depends on what device that you're looking on. If it's your your phone or your uh, computer or whatever, it's going to look different. Some of them say uh, a little arrow, and it'll say more, and you click on it, and the information will come down. That's where my store is, and my just all my recipes and information. Uh, always keep. Well, let's start here. We keep different size lamps and very much a necessity. And then I've got a couple of smaller ones. And what these would be used for is like to carry to the, to the, you know, if you're going to the bathroom or you need to go out to the outhouse or just, you know, these are easier to carry and it puts out just enough light that you can see to, or if you want, you know, if you're in your bedroom, you just need a little bit of light we I found these at flea markets and antique stores is where I find them. Now you can go to Walmart and find one of these, and you can even get the lamp oil. I order my lamp oil from uh, Mr. Brown. Will you hold this box up over here? This lamp oil is is paraffin lamp oil. It's odorless and smokeless. What's the name on it? Don't start me. To uh, yeah. It's, it's H Y O O L A. Yeah. I, I mean, I keep a bunch of it and I keep it in the box. I ain't got it out of the box, but it's paraffin lamp oil and it's odorless and smokeless. And I'm pretty sure that that is in my Amazon store or you can look online somewhere else. Um, but that's what we use and that's just something for y'all to think about. We do keep extra, uh, what are these things called? Lamp wicks. Wicks. There it is. Wicks. <laughs> Lamp wicks. The different sizes that you need for whatever sizes that you're using. And this is a very important thing right here. Is This is a, um, this is a little solar booster. And it has a flashlight right here. It even, like say you could carry it with you in your backpack or whatever, if you're out and about, it's got a uh, compass. compass on this side, flashlight. The main reason I wanted it 
is because it's solar. Take it outside, good sun, but you can plug your phone into it. So if you're without electricity, to me this is a very much of a necessity. So you can have out, you know, communication with people. So I did get this off Amazon. I'm not sure that they still have this one, but I will look and see what they have. But we've got a. I've got to do a uh, review on it, but that we've got a big one too. Yeah, I'm kind of wanting to get the solar. Because, you know, like this, today this we're one, talking about no electricity. This one here would be good, though, if bad weather was coming in, storms were coming in, and you make sure it's charged. You just got to charge it like once a month. But it'll burn. It'll burn a lamp. I yeah. Mean, I mean, it'll burn. It'll, you can play your radio on it, and you can charge your phones on it. But this would be something you could reuse, but that would be something if you used it widely would last a long time too. It will. We just need we just need the solar part of it. Yeah. It does and you can buy solar with it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It. it needs the solar part to charge it. To charge it. Right. Yes, you need to do you need to show them that sometime. This right here is called potable aqua. Now what this is is a germicidal for if you have water that you're just not sure is clean enough for you to drink or, or make tea or whatever cook with, uh, these are tablets that you put in there that uh, that's supposed to fix that and make it safe for you. So uh, I like keeping this just for that instance. Um, so I go down and get water out of the pond? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that one. We may have to use that for something else but I don't know about drinking and okay I want to talk to him about our main main thing and not everybody can do this and I understand that but for us this was one of the reasons you know when we built this small cabin to be more self-sufficient we knew we needed how we were going to heat our home and we've always heated most of our life with wood heat and even with my grandma and his parents, it was always wood. Uh, we didn't have to depend on electric or gas heat. But this big wood cook stove back here is one of our main necessities for if we... Of course, it right now, even with electricity, it, this is what heats our home in the wintertime. And when we're using it in the wintertime to heat with. Of course, I'm cooking on it too and baking in it. And so that's just wonderful. But uh, we don't use electric, we don't use gas to heat the house with. We use wood. So this is a big, big necessity for us. I mean, it's the powerhouse of our house, <laughs> if you want to put it that way, huh? And it also not only heats our home and can cook our food, but it has a big reservoir where we can heat water in it to do dishes or to take, you know, if we need to take a bath or whatever, and we're without electricity. So, and this stove back here is propane. And you can cook on it without electric. But you just have to have something to light it with. To light it with. Which we do always. So... If you're able, if you're without electric, no electric, but you're able to get propane and can afford propane, these stoves right here, any propane stove is good to have. I'm sure everybody's been seeing when you're talking about the wood heat uh, overseas in the UK and different places are having a shortage and the fuel is going to be so high. And there's a lot of people that, that can are going to have wood heat this winter over there. I've been seeing lots and lots of of articles and stories about the, the shortage and the, and I'm not sure exactly where it is, but so people are not, they're going to have to go back to this this morning. And you don't even have to have a wood cooked stove. No. You just, just a, a wood stove, because before this one it was just a wood stove that heated the, the cabin and you could raise the top and you could cook on it. Right. Or even like the little cast iron that I made a little pizza. Of. Yeah, and we're fixing to go outside. We're going to show them how we can you can cook outside, and the importance of why we built a cabin in the middle of the woods too. Because of part of being self-sufficient is timber is wood, 
So, but there's a lot of people that watch us that can't live this way. So what you do is you just do what you can. I know a lot of y'all uh, live in apartments or just are not able to do these things, but there's still little things that you can do. You can put, um, help me with some kind of heat if the electric goes out and they're heating with the electric, and, but don't have a wood stove and can't have one. Would be the only other option you're going to have is a, is a propane. A propane, a right. A small heater. Or something and like. that's what they make. And you you can, know, uh, my son one time, they were living in apartments and stuff, and he took, they didn't have no backup heat if the power went out. And he actually took and made him, took him a little little portable heater, I mean a little wall heater or whatever you want to call it, a stand heater, put it on a dolly, put it, put the tank down below it, mounted that up on the dolly, put a small tank, and worst case scenario, he would have a little bit of heat. Right. And, and the ventless heaters are relatively safe. You might crack a little wind if you, you know, if you don't feel safe with it, but we've used them. We've used, we've even got one here. We've got one on the wall here that never gets used. And the reason that if it's there for emergency reasons, as if one of us got sick and had to stay in the hospital for a week, we're going to be there with each other. And I can't, you know, there's no way the kids or whatever can come over and constantly make sure we got wood in the, in the wood cook stove. So that's what that's there for. In fact, it's collecting dust right now because we don't ever use or, it. <laughs> one of these days we get retired, we might go vacation. We might eat in the wintertime and... <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave that little heater on. <laughs> that's true. But I'm just trying to help people know because there's so many that can't do the things that we do. Always make sure, you know, that you got your flashlights. If you're not able to do this, if you're in a wheelchair and you know that it's too dangerous to do the lamps and stuff, have you plenty of uh, flashlights and, and battery-operated lamps, and they've even got solar lights and uh, stuff like that. You just have to get online, really research that. And uh, so all things are possible. And uh, You know, the blackouts I had in Texas with the ice storm mm -hmm. and all that stuff, and no power and uh, you just never never know when you're going to have we <laughs> over the years that's what i was telling them <laughs> that's what i was telling them and when we lived out on the river uh 14 days at least we had one of the worst ice storms in arkansas and um it was so bad it was scary wasn't it it was and we were blessed enough that we was without electricity for 14 days. But I worked with people and know people that were over a month with no electricity. In fact, several of them had to just go stay in hotels in other cities because it just, you know, they just got to where they couldn't, they could not handle the stress of not having electricity. And I, that's what I don't want y'all to do. I don't want y'all to have that stress of uh, always have plenty of backup water. In bottles and jugs. Uh, if you're not able, you're not living where you can do rain barrels and stuff. And that's something else Mr. Brown's going to talk to you about in just a minute, how we will be able to get water out of our well because we are on well water if electricity is not available anymore. So let's go outside and show them a few things like how I would wash my clothes. You know, also that little, like the little propane cooker thing you had mm -hmm. in here yeah a person that that has all electric might have you know with mm -hmm. your heat tank and your you could a couple of small tanks you could cook a little more stuff up if you wanted to yeah amazon and um i don't know about different places but amazon does sell the little uh countertop propane or an all-natural gas it's a two burner just really do, really check them out. Yeah, some, do your research on them. Some are very good quality. Some are pretty fair. But. Yeah, or get you one of them outdoor uh, common little stoves. Yeah. You can go outside and do that. I love cooking outside, and I can't wait for the weather to strike up so we can start doing that more. Um, so let's go outside. And they let's... make the little cooktops, I mean, the little grill top, you know, gas grill tops, and all that stuff. Yeah, you just have to do your research. So... We're going to go outside and we're going to discuss how... If I shut up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how Miss Lori would wash her clothes. 
and how y'all can wash your clothes if you have no more electricity. Okay, guys, we're going to talk about how Miss Lori would do her washing outside the house with no electricity. And this is how I'm set up. This is a what you would call a double sink, probably um, a shop sink. So it's a double shop sink, heavy duty, some kind of plastic. It's on, got legs. I've got this off of Amazon. I'm very happy with it. It's very well built. And of course, your, your little ringer here, you can buy these from Lehman's. You can buy them off Amazon, just different places. You just have to research that and look for them. This is a brand new one. Um, I had an old one in there to the point that it was just too old. So I just went ahead. In fact, it was wooden and pretty old. So I went and got this one. And it's, it does a good job. And, of course, your washboard back here. Now, I know there's different kinds of... Uh, off-grid washers that you see out there on different channels and stuff but this is how i choose to do off-grid washing right here and if y'all would like to see me and see how i would do my laundry just let me know in the comments i can show you the different ways and and different soaps and stuff that i would use uh, doing my laundry out here and right out here is where i would uh, make a fire and I would heat just enough water for different kinds of loads of laundry that would need to have warmer or hot water. Not all laundry needs hot water. You can wash laundry in just room temperature water or even cold water, but there are times that you would need to heat your water up. This board here ain't never been used, has it? Not that one. <laughs> We've got some to have. Yeah, but... Uh, well, if you don't want to see Miss Lori washing clothes, we'll get Mr. Brown to do a video on washing a whole load. I got, I got the arm. <laughs> and, of course, we've got our, uh, we need to kind of stretch that a little bit tighter, but our clothesline out there. So I would just move this closer to my clothesline and get to washing. And I even have a way that I'll show you on just a minute. When we built our, our cabin, our little bathroom in there, that I can go in there and actually in the winter time when it's so cold I cannot be out here washing clothes. I have a big enough sink, if y'all have not seen it yet, in my bathroom that I can heat water on my wood cook stove and I can take it in there and I can wash clothes in uh, the way that I've got my bathroom set up. I think he'd be a good a good clothes washer. <laughs> My my mother had a, a ringer washer, the old barrel type that had the, it was an automatic ringer, and I got my hand caught in it one time. One time? Your whole hand or your fingers? Fingers. I was playing with it, and I shouldn't have been playing with it. Wasn't nobody around, I was playing with it, but. Did you cry? No. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we used to have one set out on the back porch. I never forget it. But even if you're not able to have this kind of set up, if you're, in a, in, like I said, an elderly person in an apartment or something, there's different, just do your research, there's different ways that you can do uh, wash your clothes. You may have to do a few, you know, every day, but you can keep clean clothes, washing in your sink, and uh, you may have to take your water and throw it out the back door or something. But it's always possible. It's just inconvenient. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, you can... Get fresh clothes with it. Even even if you don't have that, you can scrub and twist and rub together. That's right. I always said you can you can be without a lot of stuff, but you can always be clean. Absolutely. <laughs> I've got a. Uh, we're talking about the well, and I've got my well bucket tore all apart, and I need to fix it. But we got a metal well bucket, and. On our well, the casing is big enough to drop that bucket down in it. And the, 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 the well bucket is, I should have brought it out here, I guess. Why don't you go get it? It's about that long. Is it hanging in here? I ain't sure where I put it, what I've done with it. But um, we'd have to pull the pump, because it's got a submergible pump. We'd have to pull that pump up out of there. And it's set up where we can do that. 
I can, me and her, me and her could probably get that done easy enough with a barrel and pulling that pipe up over the barrel. But anyway, so we could get water. We could get well water. All I do is hook me up, bring me up a little pulley. I've got all kinds of pulleys around here and a rope. Drop it down in there. And as you pick, drop it underneath and pick it back up, it seals at the bottom and it holds about, I don't remember, mm, gallon and a half, something like that, two gallon of water. I can't believe you ain't got it hanging around here somewhere. Well, I got inside there. Because I know they're going to see what it looks like. Well, it's not complete yet. <laughs> And you can buy these well buckets. Hard to find. Well, that's what I want to tell them. Right now, they're very hard to find because uh, we're trying to even find a backup one. And uh, we've looked at Lehman's and, and everywhere, and you just, they're hard to find right now. But a lot of y'all that are our age or older, y'all know about the well buckets. Um, Mr. Brown's still looking for them. But uh, <coughs> it may be out in the shop. It's okay. <clears throat> I'll show a picture of one after this, and they'll they'll know what I'm talking about. Bugging me now, though. <laughs> but anyways, I just want to show y'all some of the ways that you can set your your home set up and take care of your 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 normal daily routines of cooking and just taking care of your family. And uh, you can do it. You don't even have to be set up like this. Go to flea markets. Go to yard sales. Buy you a, a big tub. Uh, if you don't want to do the, the scrub board, which I like, I think it gets clothes really clean, they do online have the, the old-fashioned uh, off-grid wash machines where you just move it back and forth like this, stuff like that. But uh, this is a really good way to do it. So anyways, I'm going to show you how we're set up out here in the outdoor cooking area. You know, if you don't have any electricity and it's not been, you know, cleaned up in a while, so we've not been out here cooking much. Mr. Brown cooks a little bit on the pellet grill, but that's it. But I do have my propane, my pizza oven. Mr. Brown's got his uh, pot belly stove back there that y'all have seen before. That we can cook on and even bake inside of it and uh, so we can come out here anytime and we can set up and cook and uh, you know it's it's just it's not hard it's just something you just got to be set up to do so I found my well bucket it was in the shop and I thought it was now this was this is an older type it's it's really it's heavy duty the newer ones that you buy are not quite as heavy duty as this is. But as you submerge this in, this, it's got a place to ring here to tie your rope to. As you submerge it in the water, and the water will run over the top. And this is what I'm working on this one. It has a rubber uh, flip flapper, whatever you want to call it down there on the end, that will automatically, when the water runs over, it, it pushes down on and it seals it off and you draw it up. Then whenever you Get ready to put it over your bucket or whatever, and it's got a lever here that will lift that that rubber seal up, and then lift, lifts it up, and then your water run out in your bucket. But I need to get that fixed. But uh, <laughs> where are you? Now that I think about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Come back in. So I left, and I had to be that put that down. Everybody's been talking about my old truck, ain't they? Yeah. So, if you are got no more electricity, you can drive <laughs> you around drive. one of these old things and just think you're something else. Oh. Seriously. I really like this truck. People won't know if I want to sell it. I, <laughs> not right now. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> not yet. I see some, uh, I'm a, this is a 54, 1954 Chevrolet. And uh, there's 40 models and 41s that I... Boy, I really like them, but this, I like this truck. You see my, my little emblem that I made up there. That's, that's out, I built that out of horseshoes and put on there. So, you see the wood pile in the back?
I usually try to have a winter's woodcut the previous year. So this this winter, I will cut roughly eight rick of wood, and it will set for a whole year. And the reason I do that is, well, one one reason, dry wood puts off more heat, and because of Chris Oak, it helps uh, help prevent trying to burn green wood. If you burn green wood, then it will it tend to stop your flue up faster, and it won't burn as good. But this winter, I've got to cut no seven rate rick, and I plan on maybe having me some type of a lean tune shed or something that I'm going to start putting my wood under. I put tin and stuff on it, and every time the storm comes in, it blows off. No, I don't care how many rocks, how much wood you pile on top of it, it tends to blow off. But uh, I've actually had, when we built the pond down there, and we had to take the timber out of the center of the pond, I, I end up cutting two winters of wood. So last year I didn't cut wood, but this winter I'm going to have to. I'm going to start cutting again. But we bought this place because, uh, one reason because it was ma mainly all timber. And there's enough wood out here to do several lifetimes if you wanted to. Because I basically cut uh, damaged timber or timber that, you know, that's, dies on its own naturally. We've had several trees. We got, we've got one or two right here right now that died this during the drought. And I hadn't really went and looked so much on the backside and see how many I've got. But I'm fixing to wide up, widen up my driveway going down to the shop. I've got five or six trees I'm going to cut out there this fall. And I normally try to wait until the sap has went back down out of the trees to cut my wood. Uh, it's usually December or January, somewhere in there. I'll get after it. I, might, I may do some a little earlier, but uh, when all that sap gets down, the best, the four, much as it's going to. And we usually start having frost in October. So I cut some in November and uh, December sometimes. But uh, so. Well, I was telling them earlier the importance of if you're going to go buy a homestead, make sure. Uh, if only, you want to burn wood. Yeah, but <laughs> we're talking about being without electric. So that's what we're discussing is. Or a shortage of propane if you're trying to heat with propane. But oh. having this all this wood is what's going to keep us warm and keep us fed without electricity. So it's just a very important commodity, that's for sure. And I always try to have a year in advance. We don't ever know, you know, you don't ever know what's going to happen with gas. Or, no. Everything so. is, uh, you can't you can't count on tomorrow, so you just always yeah. have to be prepared. If me and you have to get out here and start cutting with my cross-cut saw, <laughs> it's going to take us a while. But we could do it, couldn't we? We'd have to video that for sure. <laughs> But guys, uh, we're going to get off here because i tell you what we're fixing to do. I know in some of the y'all's uh, different countries, y'all call it a walkabout. In Australia, I think they called it a walkabout. We're fixing to go on a driveabout. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Brown's going to get me out of the house, and we're going to drive. And we may go up to White River or Buffalo River. We don't know yet. Just We may go up to Bull Shoals Lake. I don't know yet, but we're going to take y'all with us. So that'll be the next video is our drive about and where we ended up at and maybe some neat things to show y'all. So thank y'all for all your prayers for the week that I've been sick. And um, I want to tell y'all too, there's a lot of people still wanting to know if my cookbooks have been sold out for quite a while, y'all. And I'm not sure about getting these reprinted because I'm actually thinking about this winter working on another one. So we'll just have to no. see. <laughs> Yes, but anyways, thank y'all for coming along and listening to us today. We just want y'all to always be prepared. Uh, you know, we've, we've just really talked so much over for so many months about getting your pantry full, and that is so important. But also think about 
if the grid goes down and you have to live without electricity. Please, please be prepared. And if you're elderly or you're just not able to do the things like we do here, there's other things you can do to keep yourself safe, to keep yourself warm, and to keep yourself fed. So, we'll see y'all in a couple of days, and we're going to uh, show y'all where we've been and stuff that we've done, and um, hopefully we may even stay overnight somewhere uh -oh. and wake up in a different place. <laughs> but anyways, probably not. We got two inches of rain. Yesterday yes. and last night. We That's got why you're not seeing the sun shining today. It's kind of cloudy, cloudy, but it feels good out here. Um, our pigs are growing, getting fat. Getting too fat, I think. <laughs> so everybody's good on the homestead. So we'll see you on a few days. God bless everybody, and thanks for sticking around with us. So hang on, y'all. I forgot I was going to show y'all. How my bathroom sink is set up where I can wash clothes or wash little babies or just do all kinds of things in this sink. But you can see it's big enough. If I had to, I can wash clothes in here. <laughs>